Hey guys, welcome back to the Love in Dubai show. We're now joined by a man who is no stranger to Love in Dubai studios with a number of accolades under his belt. The only cricketer to have played in the IPL and the World Cup from the UAE. This superman is not only leveling up in the game locally, but also internationally. Welcome back to the show, Shirak Suri. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, what an amazing place you guys have now. Eh? Congratulations. And uh, It's a pleasure being here. It's re- it's done so so nicely. It's, I think one of the best studios I've been in. So Stop congratulations that. to you guys. Everyone is more than welcome whenever they want. We're just here having tea at any point. So come on down, guys. I love it. I love it. It's really Thank nice, you. guys. So Thank sound. you. We love that. Um, also, okay, so today's show is going to be exciting. We're going to be asking you about match fixing. We're going to be asking whoa, you about whoa, whoa. what happens with the World <laughs> Cup. Who's going to be winning? You know, actually, I've come to realize every year. Anytime the World Cup is going on, we have you on the show predicting who's going to win. Yeah. And they usually win. You're like our octopus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're the octopus. As long as you don't make this into a coffee with Karan Shosini, I'm absolutely <laughs> fine. Because then I'll be trending in all the wrong ways tomorrow. <laughs> no scandalous questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. Keep it PG. PG? Yeah. That's the plan. So you are the only player who has, of course, uh, played in the IPL and World Cup from the UAE. So tell us about this. Look, I think um, as a player, you know, when you start off, I think um, representing a country, I think I've been so lucky to, you know, represent the UAE at the international level. And, um, you know, when you talk about achievements and, you know, things that you would love and you dream of, I think playing in a World Cup is one. And, um, you know, we're watching the World Cup now and, uh, you know, just reminds me of uh, my time last year in Australia, you know, the T20 World Cup. And... um, I think it's an amazing feeling and um, this year the World Cup being in India it's even more special you know it's like into two everything you know because there's like a billion people who are who are backing you who are behind you and you know like like they say with great uh, responsibilities you know that's like, with great powers come great responsibilities so I think it's that kind of scenario India have started off really really well the six games unbeaten right now so so I don't want to j- jinx anything on the show but They're, they're looking so good. I think uh, we all are behind them and um, I, I, I don't see them, uh, you know, faulting at the moment. I think everything's going right for them. Well, as you said, with great uh, responsibility comes great. What's great power comes great, 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 great responsibility. <laughs> But a billion people watching and as you said, like you have played for India and the UAE. What's that pressure like? Can you describe what the players must be going through at this very moment? Look, I think... Uh, You know, just being in that sort of environment, just being in India, like your your bus leaves the hotel and there's people chasing you on the sides, you know, you're leaving the hotel and, you know, from from the time you leave till you reach the stadium, there's, there's a, you're swamped with people on both sides. You know, I was in the IPL and this was happening. Imagine right now with the World Cup and India doing so well. There's such a, such a hype, even in Dubai. You know, you know, we, we caught up with all our friends as well over the weekend. And so we're watching the game. There's like 50, 60 of us watching a game at a friend's place. It, it's, it's like a festival. Mm. You know, the World Cup is like a festival all over the world. You know, not only with uh, Indians, but all other subcontinental countries. Um, you know, from British guys. Everybody's just enjoying the atmosphere. You know, it's a great time to be. And... Uh, It's, 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 it's exciting to play in a World Cup, I'll say that. I can't even okay. imagine. <laughs> I cannot. Tell us about the locker room conversation. So you have been privy to these conversations. You've been chilling with the players yeah. and the cricketers. Um, so what goes on, like right before you step out into the pitch, what are the nerves like? What are the conversations like? What is the environment like? The, so it's basically, you know, guys like to keep it very simple, I think. Um, Off, off the pitch, the guys are all simple guys, you know, they, they, they lead simple lives and uh, of course there's lots of glitz and glamour with the team and the sport but at the end of the day, you know, you got to keep, keep things very simple and um, that's what the best players in the world do, you know, they let the, the outside world be on the outside and, you know, what, what they can control is within. So they, you know, their routines, everybody has their own sort of setup and, you know, things like that and they keep it very, very simple. I think that's what the best players do. And that's why, you know, that's what it takes to be successful. You know, it's one thing that, you know, you, you get affected by all the things around you. Because, you know, sometimes you'll do well, but sometimes when it doesn't go well, you know, 
your your Instagram you know messages will be flooded like oh what are you doing why why did you get out we lost the game because of you and these are this has happened with me this has happened with my friends and you know it's great when things are going well but when it doesn't go well you know then there's a billion people behind you so it's great now that India has not lost a game for six games mm. and and I think this is the strongest team we've had. Uh, you know, probably stronger or as strong as our 2011 team, which won the World Cup. And also being in India, I don't want to say it, but I, I see I see us lifting the World Cup. You know, it's so interesting. It's coming home. <laughs> <laughs> but, no not, but not the England way. Right? Not the England way. It's coming home. Well, it reminds me, the conversation reminds me, I just saw the Netflix documentary of Posh and Bex, David and Victoria Beckham. Yeah. And, you know, he went through it in terms of like putting in that routine, being at his peak and then being torn down by the people. Absolutely. Uh, can you describe what that felt like in your own words to kind of be on the on the edge of receiving that type of hate? Yeah, look, I think it's uh, you can do 10 things right, but that one thing you do wrong, that's that's where the, all the attention goes. You know, people forget about all the good things you've done, but that one mistake or that one sort of slip, and that's exactly where the, the person, oh, so, you know, you did that. Oh, so you went out. So, you know, there was an event last night in Mumbai as well, and I saw all the World Cup players who playing in the World Cup attend that event. And, you know, obviously that was uh, at the... Ambani's uh, new Geo Mall. Geo, Geo Mall. So all the players are there. So now I, I'm I'm expecting some, if they lose the next game tomorrow, which is in Mumbai, I'm expecting them to get some backlash on that. I, I, it's a very controversial topic. Nobody's sort of touched on it yet, but seeing it from a cricketer's point of view, Sim, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. They were at the event, people... Yeah. Like you need a reason to you know point out you know why we lost the game and if they if there's any slip up this will be this will be the talking point let me tell you that can can I ask by the way because anyone that knows Ireland's World Cup journey in rugby yeah we thought we had the strongest team that we have we really thought we we're going to go all the way we've never done it before we've never got past the quarterfinals it was ten to one odds to make it and we didn't make it it was heartbreaking and however the country's response was very forgiving mm. and. Wow. We got, <laughs> They wow. got it. They That's, got we're, it. <laughs> we're not forgiving in India. I'll tell you that. We're, no, no, no. <laughs> we're not forgiving <laughs> back home. There's, there's no forgiving there, especially because this World Cup's in India. I mean, look. Yeah. The, the people will take you from here till there. You mm. know, that's that's what the, the media and the people are doing. And um, But when it doesn't go, <laughs> we're not forgiving back home. Yeah, there's a billion people behind you. Right. Well, <laughs> you got to run. Yeah. You got to run. <laughs> yeah. yes. Because we saw, right, when uh, like a couple of years ago, this happened with Pakistan Pakistani players. Like the fans were just not having it. They're like, you guys go out eating fast food every yeah, day. Yeah. You're not exercising. Biryani. You're not like tearing down every single aspect of their lives. And this happened. to Indian players and that too more so with their wives you know if yeah. they get their wives uh, to watch the matches yeah. and in case they lose the match their wives are to blame for the loss yeah. so uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the superstitions that play come at play in cricket and also your personal superstitions if you have any yeah I had a, I had a few um, superstitions when I was playing you know maybe I would put my front or left pad on first and then my right pad on and then before a game like I would always um, To order room service. Like I had I had a few, I wouldn't go out. So I had a few superstitions when I was playing, but I try to keep it as less as possible. But some people really do. Like I know Rohit Sharma for a fact that his wife loves watching him play. And she's always there. And they and they say, like, you know, she's always there, like, you know, murmuring like a prayer or something in the background. And, she, and then and then it's it's quite funny when he gets out and then, you know, she gives us and then the camera's like pointing in her face, like zoomed in. <laughs> So, sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a lot of pressure also, you know, being a family and, you know, associated with the cricket players in, in whatever aspect. It could be a wife or girlfriend or whatever it is. But I think it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's also the fun. I think uh, that's what makes, you know, things special and it makes sort of you, you, you more motivated as a player. I think I like the pressure, you know, big crowds. Um, they always they always inspired me and motivated me to do well. It's like you got to put a show on, I think. Uh, I think as players, we love that. You don't feel the pressure to just perform at your peak and like all the expectations, you know, when there's such a massive crowd, it, yeah. you get the adrenaline, but at the same time, you know, everything has the pros and cons. Yeah, absolutely. I think it um, uh, depends what kind of personality you are. And it's um, more often than not the top players in the world, you see like, uh, you know, even like a Ronaldo or Messi, they love the pressure. They thrive on that. You know, that's what fuels them. I think uh, 
uh, one of the, the top players in the world, that's what they love. You know, they want to perform in the big games. Like, you know, you see Virat Kohli perform against India, Pakistan. Like, you know, those are like big games. There's like billions of people watching. And, you know, these guys just, they go there and they're like, this is my day. You know, that's the, that's the sort of confidence they have and they want to step up on the big occasion. And um, that's that's what their quality is, the big, the big players, yeah. Let's talk about your journey specifically. Um, obviously, playing for both the UAE and India, how do you... let's say, describe the opportunities that the UAE gave you as you came up in the game? Look, definitely, you know, I was about uh, 10 years old when I moved uh, from uh, Delhi to Dubai. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people said your cricket career will not sort of thrive over here. And, you know, you won't get as much opportunity. And, you know, Dubai yeah, cricket is good, but the UAE is still a young country and it's more upcoming. But, you know, I've been grateful. I've, um, you know, played about 100 international matches for the UAE. I've played in the IPL. played in the league in Canada, the T10 league. Uh, I've got lots of good opportunity. I'm grateful. And um, this is the, this is my home now. And uh, I mean, we love going back home to India and everything, but this country has given me everything. You know, today I'm, uh, I'm on the show. I'm grateful because you know, I made a name for myself and represented the UAE. So um, if I was in India, who knows, you know, where I would have been with my career. And, you know, there's a billion people. So, so, so lots of talent gets lost in India. You know, there's so many people. It's very difficult to come up the ranks and get noticed and things like that. But I had this platform and uh, I tried to grab every opportunity. I didn't find excuses. It's more like, you know, even if there's that slight chance, I tried to take it. You know, whether it was like, uh, I, I, we saw all those documentaries about the top players, you know, Beckham and all these guys and how they're so consistent with their routines. So I was similar. I was a bit of a chubby, chubby boy. And, you know, I, I had that whole sort of transition into, you know, the, the coaches and everybody said, look, Chag, you're, you're good now. You'll survive on talent alone. But without the hard work, you're not going to go as far. So I think um, yeah, so those sort of wake up calls and, you know, I was always uh, hungry to do well. And um, This, this is what I dreamt of, and I'm glad to be here. Amazing. So where do you see the UAE's, um, UAE men's cricket team in five years? Better yet, where do you see yourself in five years? Look, I think um, the, the UAE men's team is all, all also going through a transition phase now. You know, we played the World Cup last year. We had, um, you know, good young guys coming into the side and things like that. I think over the next five years, we've seen how well Afghanistan has done, the Netherlands team has done now. And, you know, they were also young teams like us before. You know, nobody sort of um, put them on that stage before and they were never tested in that stage. But now there's opportunities coming up. And, um, you know, all over the world, you get to sort of mingle with all these top players and you get to learn from them. So the opportunities are there now. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, I see a similar uh, transition for the UAE team as well to where Afghanistan is maybe today. You know, they've got world class international players playing all over the world, um, making their countries proud. And I I would definitely see our our team as well representing on the world stage uh, similar to that. Speaking of uh, teams kind of coming up in the ranks, take India out of it for one second. <laughs> no. In, in, uh, come no. on, we, we, have to, we have to be fair here. We're an unbiased channel. Okay. If, India, if, if India wasn't in the game, who, who do you see making it going all the way? Look, I think... Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God, my, my, first, my first answer is it's probably going to be the same, but I think um, Australia is always a good, good, good team. And even though they've sort of struggled to get their form, but they always peak at the right time. And they're also that crunch game players. So now last couple of games, they've really sort of come into their own. So they're always a good team. Um, South Africa has been really good this year. Oh. I know I know, I know. know they have the tag of being chokers and uh, they sort of in the big games, they fall. But um, South Africa has a very, very good team. Um, the Kiwis, New Zealand. It's amazing that uh, in a population of four or five million, uh, you know, uh, The New Zealand, the Kiwi national team, they have a world-class rugby team, they have a mm-hmm. world-class cricket team. And we, in, in India, we have a population of a billion people. Yeah. yeah. So it, there, there's some amazing um, sport culture and sports structure in okay. New Zealand. And I've been there myself and I've seen it. You know, people go out like you see every single person, you know, being active and, uh, you know, enjoying that lifestyle. Where, whether they're two years old, five years old or 50 years old, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's, it's, it's that culture. And, and I'm seeing that now within the UAE as well. People are, they, they realize what benefits sport has or the culture of being active and, you know, introducing it 
not only as a sort of workout, but as a lifestyle in all. I think um, it's amazing to see because there's some really, really talented people in the UAE. And I've seen it, you know, whether it's with cricket, football, tennis, um, we have some really talented sportsmen in this country and um, we we'll definitely see more of them in the coming future. Amazing. So, okay, now if I was to get into cricket, okay, fine. A boy in school, you know, killing yeah. it in cricket. How does he get into the UAE men's cricket team? So, look, I think uh, the pathways, um, there's different pathways always. You know, you know, some people never play cricket until they're like 20, 22 years old. And then they, you know, they'll probably be playing tape, tape ball cricket in, in Dera or, you know, in Sharjah in some corner. And you, you see a talent and then, you know, you just sort of bring him in. He may be a bowler. But the, I, I, the way I came through was from school cricket. I went on to progress to under 15 UAE college cricket. Uh, under under 19 World Cup, I represented the UAE, uh, and then I transitioned into the men's team. So that's that was my pathway. But everybody has their own journey. You know, you you there's guys who never uh, played cricket or touched a cricket ball till they're 20, 22 years old, and or 20 even 25, and they debut at like 30 or 32 years old. So I think there's no sort of uh, one route. Mm -hmm. I think talent and hard work finds its way. I think. And we That's do. what I'll say. And as cliche know. as it sounds. <laughs> True. And there are a lot of places in the UAE where you can do it. Um, we're going to put you on the spot very shortly. However, um, we do want to quickly ask you about match fixing because obviously it's been a hot topic for years with cricket. There's been crackdowns. There's been regulations on it. Have you seen it with your own eyes? And do you think now it's a clean sport? Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, this sport is such a thing that It's vulnerable to such uh, activities and, you know, there's always these corruptors and people who are, uh, you know, uh, causing this uh, thing in the game. And uh, it's not it's not a pleasant sight. I've been in a team where, you know, this has happened and um, it's happened around me with the players. And uh, you don't come to you don't come to know until, you know, these people are caught and then you're like, oh, you know, it was this guy who was you know doing it. But wow. but uh, it, it is the nature of uh, the sport and um, All, all kinds of sport are, you know, nothing is prone to this. You know, people are corrupting everywhere because they're trying to, you know, um, you know, take advantage of people and, you know, things like that. And, and I feel that, look, um, as a sportsman, you know, we take the oath of, uh, especially when you're representing a country or any team for that matter. It could be a club team or a domestic level team. I think you play with your pride. You just got to remember, you know, why you started playing. You know, you love the game. That's why you played and you gave... I gave my whole life to this game, you know, and when when you hear about these kind of things and these situations, uh, you you just got to be very, very smart. You got to know when, you know, there's any sort of um, threat or, you know, somebody's trying to approach you or make an approach. You got to take the right channel, report it, you know, you got to completely remove corruption. And uh, I know that these things happen and you know we've seen a lot of people get caught in the past and things and it's not good for the game it's not good for a viewer people you know start thinking <laughs> i know i was watching a game with uh, swimmer and she's a chair like, oh no 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 that is that is fixed and you know this guy <laughs> purposely did and i was like no swimmer, it doesn't work like that it doesn't it's not it's not it's not like that they have their own ways you know they do it in um, certain overs and like you know certain small parts of the game it's not as blatant that he'll give his wicket away or something it's in small things now this is what we've seen in the past and mm -hmm. it's tough to sort of catch on to but um, the ICC is doing an amazing job you know they're trying to keep the game as clean as uh, possible and uh, uh, you know over the last couple of days I don't think there's been any such incidents reported um, so it's it's uh, good as a viewer it's good as a player it's good uh, as a you know, viewer of the game or someone who loves the game, you know, you want it to be as clean as possible. Okay, before we get into the game, I just want to, like, the game they're going to The game is still there you. after this? Yes, <laughs> this is not the game. Oh, I just okay. want to ask, so if you remove cricket, like, what is the one thing that cricket has taught you? Like, if you remove cricket, you feel like you wouldn't have had this learning or yeah. this one of... I think being being humble, I think uh, being approach, uh, approachable to... and open to all different situations, tough times, good times. You know, cricket is such a sport that it, it shows you it shows you that and it shows you this as well, like mm -hmm. we spoke about any sport for that matter. And cricket, you you get to deal with all people from all specs of life and all around the world. And the exposure, the amount of learning I've got, I think it's definitely humbled me and I'm grateful for that. And I'll always take that away from the game and that's what the game has given me. 
Okay, well said. Um, okay, Shirag, sorry, we're going to put uh, you to the test. <laughs> You're going to have to give us the first name, the first person that comes to your mind when we say something. So, for example, if I said Love and Dubai host, you might say Simran. Yeah. So now we're going to take it into cricket, though. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. An amazing sportsman. Um, Virat Kohli. Okay. A star bowler. It can be, by the way, of any team. Star bowler. Rashid Khan. Rashid Khan. Iconic team captain. MS Dhoni. Ace batsman. Chirag Suri. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Always on the reserve. Ooh, um, I would say Rohit Sharma. Um, clown on the field. Clown on the field. Uh, Ishan Kishan. I would have thought Hardik. Hardik Pandya. I didn't want to say clown. He's a bit older to me. But Ishan's <laughs> played with me, so it's fine. How about a predator on the field? Ooh, a predator. I think that, that, that would be Shubhan Gill. He's, yeah. he's, he's one of the young upcoming cricketers. He, we call him the prince. Virat Kohli is the king uh-huh. and Shubhan Gill is the prince now. So he's got that tag because he's supposed, supposedly Virat's successor. Cool. Because I heard like in the West Indies team, uh, Richard... Right, yeah. Sir Richard. Sir, Sir Vivian Richards, yeah. Vivian Sir Richards, Vivian. he yeah. was like a predator on the field. Yeah. Yeah, Would yeah, you yeah. say anyone has taken up his spot? He's he's a legend. I think um, he has a different sort of uh, you know s- s- place approach. in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got his own approach, and you know at that time guys would be bowling at 100 miles an hour, and there would be no helmet. Imagine, mm-hmm. no helmet, no protection, and you're getting hit on your chest. You're getting hit on your face. And like this guy is like, he gets hit with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. Like today, a guy gets hit. I'm like, call the physio, call the doctor. I need to go. This, these guys were like back in the day were so so tough. And I'm, mm. the guys are now also tough, but we're a bit we're a bit softer than the guys back <laughs> back in the olden days. I'd say definitely. So true. Jumping from predator to okay, so I'm, I'm only asking this because of your cap, so Red Bull. So who is a bull on the field? Who's a bull on the field? Um, I would say. Uh, Nirshan Dikwela, I think I played with him, he's from Sri Lanka and he's definitely a bull on the field, he's a wicked keeper. He's always spurring and he's always, you know, he's always active, energetic and, uh, and a good guy to be around. Who is your idol? My idol's always been uh, Virat Kohli. I sort of saw his journey from the under-19 time into the main side and uh, of course I've always looked, at, uh, looked up to him and uh, it was one of my dreams when I met him as well. And, um, you know, spend some time with him. And um, I think uh, such a role model, not only to a sportsman, but in uh, just just to look up to, you know, I think a very, very motivational, inspirational guy. Oh, that's incredible. Okay, so the next player to get married. Ooh, the next player to get married. <laughs> like this one. Ooh. <laughs> Shubman Gill has a girlfriend. I don't know, but if he's in the oh, mood. Who's his girlfriend again? What's her name? Sarah. Sachin Sarah. Sachin's uh, daughter. Sachin Tendulkar's daughter. Oh, wow. Sarah Tendulkar. So Sachin Tendulkar is like the ex The goat. The ex-goat. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's okay, always going to be the goat. But yeah. Um, yeah, he's... Their kid's daughter. Cricket would be... Mm. <laughs> Imagine there'll be like a cricket, cricket <laughs> sort of... Uh, she's, the the kid, she's probably yeah. seen his, her dad for like the last... 40, 50 years just play cricket and then now yeah, he'll, be, he'll be he'll uh, be in like another 40 years hey there's no peace in this house there's nothing imagine you're coming back ah oh, today we've lost the she's game she's used to it she's used, used to, to it, it. She's, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah, and you know once you like something you, and then you're like no I want to stay away from it the more you want to stay away from it the more it, it sucks you in <laughs> this is the case with this girl the, you know, she, she's, she wants it she can't stay away from it you know And I think... Like uh, Casey was saying their kid, imagine their kid oh, going to become a prodigy on the field. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it works <laughs> like that, uh, definitely. So are we saying they are the next to get? Uh, so you're saying they're going to get married? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not, don't quote me on this, Amy, but uh, let's see. Let's see. I'll just say, I'll just say him. It'll be Chirag fun. Suri has confirmed <laughs> <And> the marriage <laughs> rumors. <laughs> Our last one, one player who can single-handedly carry the team. Ooh. Any country. Any country. I'd say um, from um, South Africa, I think I've seen uh, Quinton de Kock do it uh, really, really well. Um, from the Indian team, you know, we've uh, seen, I think, um, Jaspeed Brumra, uh, the fast bowler. He's been doing really, really well and single-handedly taking the attack. Obviously, now we have other guys stepping up. That's the beauty of uh, the team right now, that um, 
we have good fast bowling, we have good spinners, and we have good batsmen. So we all round the team is doing really well. But um, these guys can definitely single-handedly win you games. You know, Virat Kohli for that matter, um, Rohit Sharma. So all these guys can single-handedly win you cricket games. I think that's what makes them amazing. You know, there's 11 people and there'll be wickets falling on the other end. But this guy will be standing and he'll be smashing it. I mm -hmm. think that's, that's how strong they are mentally. They don't care what's going on. They care about what, you know, how they're feeling. And it, they, just, they just sort of express themselves. Okay, before we wrap it up, I just want to ask two teams who you're anticipating will win and take home the ICC World Cup. India and Australia for me. Mm. I'll, I'll, uh, my favorite is India, definitely. They've been in form. They're playing in India. We want to see them win. And it'll be like an icing on the cake, I think, if India wins this. And imagine they win unbeaten. I'm, I'm saying they're going to not lose one game in the World Cup and oh they win this God. unbeaten. If they, if they do that, you better play this, you better play this video. Live on Love in Dubai when India wins the World Cup. India will win the World Cup. <laughs> well, a huge win on home soil would no doubt be amazing. Can you imagine? 100%. No match fixing, it'll be a, it'll right? Be, it'll be a holiday yeah, in India. It'll be a public holiday for sure. If India wins, it'll be a public holiday. Of course, sure. absolutely. <laughs> it'll be a public <laughs> holiday in Dubai. <laughs> We, we, want, we want off from work. We'll be all on the streets and, you know, honing and uh, on Jumeirah Road. And I think uh, it'll be an amazing, amazing scene. As you should be. Seeing your country on a national prize is amazing. Shirak Suri, absolute legend. Take us through everything we need to know about cricket. We really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure and um, always, always good vibes. And, you know, seeing you guys uh, in, in the show today and, uh, you know, watching you guys all the time, I think... Uh, It's very informative, and I'll just you know finish off by saying all our prayers go out uh, to to the to the people in uh, Gaza, uh, Israel, all over the world. You know we we want to have peace everywhere. You know want to live in one one as one family, and I think uh, everybody wants that. And um, just prayers out to everyone. Uh, you know who's uh, in 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 that sort of state right now and suffering. We want people to be in uh, peace and okay. love. Yeah. Thank Very you. nicely put. Thank you. Guys, that is all we have time for on the Love in Dubai show this morning. We're back with you tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Massive thank you to Shirek Suri once again. Bye-bye from me. Goodbye from me. Bye-bye. <laughs>